Hello and welcome to Florian Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got one of our vintage kit reviews. So today we've got the Monogram 148 scale F101 Voodoo. So if you don't know, here at Florian Models, we're having a look back at some of the old classic kits and seeing just how good they are. And because I'm a particular martyr for them, I'm actually going to be building this one as well and having to deal with all the trials and tribulations of leaving on and not rescribing. So I'm going to have to put back in raised panel lines and details and things like that. Okay, so here she is, a beautiful kit. I'm very much a fan of this aircraft and I remember building this kit many, many times, many, many years ago. So anyway, this particular one was first released in 1985, obviously by Monogram. There was a rebox in 1986, some new parts were added with it in the Southeast Asia camo. Uh, then there was a couple of other things as well, um, added in around about uh, with new box art and things like that in the late uh, sort of 80s and early 90s, there was a white version done. Uh, Hasegawa then did their re-release of this particular kit with different decals uh, and that was in 2000 and this particular box actually comes from 2001. Then it switched over obviously with Ravel and then obviously Ravel were doing it under their brand name so it was just new box art really uh, and some new decals and right the way through. So again it has been around quite a while. As I said before the only thing that sort of supersedes this one is the actual Kitty Hawk version but unfortunately uh, as they're not around at the moment uh, you're a little bit stuck from uh, what kit you're going to do. So hopefully this one will spark some interest. So anyway, beautiful box art as you can see down in here with the Air Force Grey, beautiful high colour tail on that one. And again, some look around on the models. We've got a picture build up the model down in there. It is one of their Century Series kits and hopefully we'll be looking at a few more of those a little bit later on. But your kit number for this one is 5843. And again, some more of the details down in there just like that. All right. So in the box, we are greeted by a very old box as you can see but again these are old kits but luckily this is still sealed which is obviously the main part when you're looking for it so it's in one giant bag there's lots of bits and pieces running around in here but hey ho all right so what we do we'll pop that off to one side we've got the clear parts which are separate bagged as well which is handy we've got some decals and obviously if you are buying older kits uh, shall we say and things like that as you know one of the biggest problems you're going to get is this so we've got cracking and we've got all types of deterioration in here. But fear not, there's no point actually using these decals. I would never try and use these because there's no point putting all that work into your model and then it ends up like this. There's lots of aftermarket ones available. Just go to your local sort of uh, uh, decal place or whatever it is you use and you can probably bring up hundreds and hundreds of different versions and markings, including probably the ones that are in the kit as well. So again, I won't be using these decals. Anyway, in the instructions, we are greeted by, if I can get in, we've got the colour call out obviously on the front and then we are straight into it. And again, they're pretty good instructions. The actual uh, layout and the way they're talking about it and showing you the different angles is very nicely done. So obviously it's talking about opening up holes and various parts for this one right the way through. And again, it's talking about areas that are gonna be painted different colors. So you've got your titanium areas and stuff like that. But generally working right the way through on here and then going through, we've got nice intakes. We've got first stage of the sort of compressor blades, things like that, all being fitted down into here. Wing tops, and again, looks like we've got detail, as I said before, inside the wheel wells, which is very nice. We've got the actual splitter for the intakes as well being fitted onto this one. And then we've got the seat detail. We've actually got a pilot figure, which is quite nice. And then we've actually got the cockpit and some of those details that are added down in there. Again, it'll all be nice raised details, so we can do some nice hand painting down in there. The cockpit tub slides in. Uh, from the underside and again depending obviously which ones you're doing it with the armament bays and things like that that's going to be fitted in underneath so again it's got that sort of rotary weapons bay on these ones all right nose gear and nose well system being put together and you do have to put it in uh, to get it all in there as you can see just down in there and then that entire assembly slides into the nose area then we've actually got the bay but for the doors and everything being fitted down underneath and then the mid part of the wing section gets fitted onto the fuselage those engines that poke out the back because it's got an afterburner on it there's a story to that uh, wiki it and you'll find out all the reason why it looks odd all right then we've actually got the gears main gears being fitted into those into the wheel waves making sure you've got your alignment correct and we've got some of the actual struts as well being fitted down in there 
Then it's over to the other side. So we've actually got the speed brakes again, beautifully detailed as well. And then we've got some of the actual fairing areas and the doors, if you're doing the open or close, whichever version you're doing in there. And then we've got those Falcon missiles, uh, which are gonna be fitted on underneath. So again, depending on which version you're doing, or if you're doing the Genie, uh, you can have the Genie system in there with two of those underneath this one. Fuel tanks being fitted in there. Don't forget they do come out at a funny angle. We've got the nose section being fitted on there and pitots being fitted in. Then we've got the first stage of the actual HUD and it has got the little uh, gun sight system onto that one being fitted in. Cockpit, obviously open or closed, up to you. Air brakes at the back, obviously up to you if you're going to have those open or closed. Then we've got the stabs at the back, so we've got the stabilizers being fitted down into there and a couple more probes on the front and that will complete your build. So again, it's nothing massively over the top. There's nothing complex into this. It's all gonna be about the cleanup. Obviously, you've got your marking call outs and you've got your colors in there. And what's really nice, it has got the Fender or standard color codes for this. One thing that's better than the way Revel used to do it when they put their horrible markings and things on there. So we'll look at the clear parts of last. So this is, I feel now a little bit bad cutting open this bag because it's been, you know, it's one of those ones where it's been here to go through and you know ah, it just feels wrong but i've done it now so we move on okay so the bag's got lots of loose bits in here i think so we'll just try and keep it somewhat nice and out of the way all right see what we mean we've got lots of loose parts and that's something you need to be mindful when you're doing these all right so we'll push those at the top so fuselage bits again one of the things i love about the monogram kits, especially the Century series, is okay, it's got raised details, but the details are very, very nice. It's good, sharp work. And this is what we're saying about, yes, okay, it's not recessed, but, you know, it's that sharp, I think you can get away with it. And that's why we're gonna try and leave these on here. Because as I say, I've rescribed this kit before, and it's not a problem, because there's not a million rivets and all the rest of it, but there's a hell of a lot of <laughs> rescribing to do. But as you can see, hopefully catching it down in there in the light, you can see all this gorgeous detail. The plastic itself is quite the hard type, so it's quite easy to work with, it's quite nice. We've got some of the, the lines, obviously some of these are from different versions, so you might have to take some of these off, depending which ones you're doing. But again, you can see it's got very nice, sharp, crisp, lines to it even the way that the actual rudder fits in very nice we've got this areas down the back for the shielding the clamshells we call it down here very reminiscent obviously of the phantom and again it's beautifully done very very nice internal wise obviously there's nothing really to look at at all because it's you know as is all right all the details going to go down in the inside but hopefully you can see it's a good starting point just like that so with that said we move over to get these apart We've even got crew. So, first sprue up, as you say, full one. You can see we've got tops of the wings. So all the control surfaces and the bits and pieces are all molded down there in one. But again, this is one of the highlights from the kit. You can probably see just down in here, is that the actual detail is very, very nice. So we've got all this detail in here. Tons of it, absolutely tons of detail. Again, and then obviously all the parts. We've got nice detail in these wheel wells. So this is this sort of flappy type uh, speed brakey thing at the back. Uh, and again, beautiful detail. And to think how old this gear is, so it's probably designed early 80s. It's no real problem at all. You can see it's got really nice sharp details. The cockpit, again, it's gonna take a little bit of masking and stuff, but it's got nice sharp details all on here. Some of these bits have come away, but you can probably see we've got one ejector pin down in the middle, but there's none anywhere where it would matter. So we can get away with that, no problem at all. The actual wing section, you can probably see, really very, very nice. Some good, good details in all of that. And then again, it's that thing, it's a mixture. We've got recessed and raised details down in here as well. So we've got some recessed ones on the fuel tanks. And again, areas on the nozzles, we've got raised. Outer doors, pretty good with all of these. But again, little things that you're gonna expect, we've got you know, technically you can go along call that stress skin, but uh, again, it's actually a little bit of sink mark in the plastic. But very, very nice indeed. Okay, so over on here, we've actually got the main underside sections of various things for the intakes, wheels and stuff. And again, if we start with this underside section, you can see it's all here. All the details right here to use and again, it's really nicely detailed. This attention to detail down in here with the flap area, 
absolutely gorgeous very very nice and then again you flip it over to this side we have got some very shallow eject pins down in there in that intake but that's absolutely fine but the gear the seats very nice obviously it does come with the crew so you can put them in but obviously you've got all the harness detail and the seats aren't bad at all very very nice so again the wheel detail you know companies could do a lot more to look at this and say do you know what they were kicking it out well the detail down in here in the nose well very very nice the engine details a bit mm, but there again very nice indeed all right <coughs> Then down in here, we've got the different types with the weapon system and the nose and the various areas like that. But again, the nose is very nice. Good, clean jobs. And we've got the Genie system down in here to be fitted in here. Or we've got those Falcons, which are these ones here, which are gonna fit in. So depending on which weapon bay you want. And again, it's a rotary type weapon bay. So you can do all your bits and pieces with that one as well. But it's all here, instrument panels all looking very nice. And again, you know, this is one of those areas. There's not a ton of sink marks on this, like you might imagine. We've got the crew, and there is some arms on the other sprue, but obviously it's just come away from the sprue, this one. But again, really nice, good detail right the way through. We've got the nozzles. So again, pretty darn good. I think they'll look really nice when they're done and painted up. And again, we've got things like the HUD. Uh, sorry, the forward combing where the HUD's gonna come through. That's actually looking nice. We've got that splitter for the intake, looking very, very good. And we've got one of the speed brakes down in here, which again, really nice. If you're having it open, it's got all the detail on these. So very, very nice indeed, all right. Last up, we've got some of the clear parts. So this is what we're talking about. Look how good that is. That stands up today against anyone's. There's not a horrible center seam running right the way through the middle. And considering its age, there's a little bit of wobble in there, but it's not that bad. I think it will work really very, very well. So it should be absolutely fine. And we've got a little clear part for the instrument panel down in here. We've got the gun sight and we've got the actual lights. And again, beautifully done. We've got the recce light as well. So very nice indeed. Good, clear stuff. I'm excited. I must admit, as I said, since we started talking this on one of the shows and we were talking about doing old kits and that, this was always going to be the one I was going to do because I've got real fond memories of it and I get really excited about some of these old kits. And I've got some real vintage classics to show you over the next few weeks as well. So stay tuned for that. And I've got some that I didn't even know existed. Like who knew Tamiya actually made their own helicopter? So anyway, we've got that one coming up in a couple of weeks as well. But also we've got some of the big boys from Monogram. So we've got the big, massive 48 scale B29 down in there. We've got the B24. We've got all their classic kits as well. We've got the B25. So we'll be reviewing those as we make our way through. But again, if you do want to join in with the fun over on Flory Models, we are going to be doing it. It'd be great to have you join along and talk about your trials and tribulations and how you deal with it as well. And then obviously you can follow along with the video builds because I'll be obviously building this one. Matt's going to be building the B25. And I know obviously the team are getting a bit itchy to join in with it as well so they're going to be doing a few kits as we make our way through anyway that is the vintage kit review from the classic monogram 148 scale f101 voodoo